Hey guys, in this lecture what I'd like to do is go over some weld symbols. Weld symbols are found on some build prints to indicate where welds should be going, what they should look like. How it's going to work in this class is as you weld a new weld, I'm going to come up and I'm going to show you a new weld symbol. So there's actually going to be about four or five videos that are just about weld symbols, but they all should be pretty short. We're going to start with a stringer bead or a surface bead because that's the first weld you guys are going to be making. The purpose of a stringer bead or a surface bead is to build up the material. Now sometimes this could be hard facing on a bucket, sometimes you might need to build it up so that way another plate can come and uh, be pressed up against it and not have a gap. These welds are also called buttering welds, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now all weld symbols start with a base. This base is made up of a reference line, which is the straight line. It's going to have a tail and it's going to look something like that and then it's going to have an arrow otherwise known as a leader or an arrow depending on uh, who you're talking to now the reference line will indicate what kind of weld symbol or what kind of weld you need to make there's going to be different smaller symbols on top of this symbol and i'm going to go over those in a second the arrow will indicate where it's going to be located, like where that weld's going to be located. Typically, this will be pointing at a joint or a junction of some sort. It is possible to see arrows come off multiple times. It might have three of these guys. It does not change anything, no matter how many arrows you have. The tail here on the back will be filled with notes. They're just going to go in the back here. Oops. They're just going to go in the back here. This could be things like C detail one, or it could be uh, the WP that is required for this weld. It could be the type of weld it's going to be. It could be the type of stick or something like that. So let's go ahead and I want to break down the reference line a little bit better. Okay, so we got that stuff cleaned off. What we have is this reference line actually has two sides to it. The top side is considered the other side side and the bottom side is considered the arrow side just like that now what this would indicate is if it's pointing at a joint the arrow side will be you're going to weld the joint that the arrow is actually pointing to while the other side would be indicating that you need to weld the opposite side of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a T-joint and I don't want you guys to get too nervous because we're not to the point where I want to teach you about T-joints or the symbols for T-joints, but it is a very easy way to see this in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that up and we're going to talk about it for a second. So here's my symbol of a T-joint and I'm going to start adding some fillet welds onto this, this reference line so we can get, we can get started. So if the, the fillet weld, which is just a triangle, is located on the other side, it's indicating to you that we're actually going to be placing a weld on this side of the plate. Now if both sides are, uh, are on there, just like so, that would indicate that both sides of this joint need to be welded. If this side here was missing, that would indicate that it was only going to be a weld on the arrow side. You can see how this could become very, compor very important. This is also one of the most confusing things for me. When I was out looking at blueprints and stuff like that, I had a hard time distinguishing whether it was on the arrow side or the other side. It also gets difficult when you start getting into the V grooves because sometimes you're going to do a back gouge or something like that on there and you need to be able to distinguish which one is the arrow side and which one is the other side. So let's go ahead and continue on and let's talk more about surface beads. So a surface bead will just be these two little bumps like this. Notice that they're on the arrow side. The reason for that being is this arrow is going to indicate a plate surface. You actually never see it where there's something on the other side. That would indicate that they want to put a weld on the back side of the plate that you're working on. And it's just not common when they could easily just point it out on the, the blueprint. So now the reason that there's two bumps and not just one because you're doing a stringer bead is because the same symbol is used for back gouging a weld. So we try to distinguish that by two having two separate bumps, okay? Now, if you've seen in my notes, there are some that have like a, uh, a one fourth or something over to the side. This is indicating how tall that weld needs to be. 
Typically, if it is something that is like a quarter of an inch or three eighths, you're actually gonna have to do multiple beads to build it up. Now, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna continue building onto it, but for right now, this is the point that we, we're at. So just remember that this line going across, that is your reference line. This line going down with the arrow on it is the arrow or the leader. The tail right here, that is place that you might put notes, WPs, things like that, or something indicating to go somewhere else. It also could tell you to go look at another weld symbol and it's matched to, to that weld symbol. Um, and then remember, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna put our actual symbols for each weld on that reference line. The top side, this is the other side, and the bottom side is the arrow side. And the arrow side is gonna be whatever side the arrow is pointing to. Now I went ahead and I dropped a, a picture or a link to a grouping of symbols, pretty much every weld symbol you're ever gonna need. Um, so go ahead and start getting familiar with it, but up to this point in the module, we're only going to be testing you on what we've talked about in this video. So go ahead and get started. If you have any questions, let me know.